Hi Diamondback friends and families, I hope you're doing well today. I'm excited to read this book to you this week. It's called The Tenth Good Thing About Barney. Now this book starts out a little sad because the character in this book, the main character, just lost his cat. And he's super sad that he lost his cat and he's wondering how to cope with it. And I know sometimes we have hard things in life too. So let's see how this, this person figures out how to cope with the loss of his cat. The Tenth Good Thing About Barney by Judith Vorst. My cat Barney died last Friday. I was very sad. I cried and I didn't watch television. I cried and I didn't eat my chicken or even the chocolate pudding. I went to bed and I cried. My mother sat down on my bed and she gave me a hug. She said we could have a funeral for Barney in the morning. She said I should ask or think of 10 good things about Barney so I could tell them at the funeral. I thought, and I thought, and I thought of good things about Barney. I thought of nine good things, then I fell asleep. In the morning, my mother wrapped Barney in a yellow scarf. My father buried Barney in the ground by a tree in the yard. Annie, my friend from next door, came over with flowers, and I told good things about Barney. Barney was brave, I said, and smart and funny and clean, also cuddly and handsome, and he only once ate a bird. It was, a, it was sweet, I said, to hear him purr in my ear, and sometimes he slept on my belly and kept it warm. Those are all good things, said my mother, but I just count nine. I said I would try to think of another one later. At the end of the funeral, we sang a song for Barney. We couldn't remember any cat songs, so we sang one about a pussy willow. Even my father knew the words. Then Annie and I went into the kitchen with mother. She gave us orangeade and butter cookies and she left the box on the table so we could have seconds. I gave my seconds to Annie. I miss Barney, I said. Annie said Barney was in heaven with lots of cats and angels drinking cream and eating cans of tuna. I, said Barney, was in the ground. Heaven, said Annie, heaven. So there. The ground, I told her, the ground. You don't know anything. My father came in from the yard and took a cookie. Big mouthed Annie said heaven again. I said ground. Tell her who's right, I asked father. She doesn't know anything. Maybe Barney's in heaven, my father began. Aha, said Annie, and stuck her tongue out at me. And maybe, said my father, Barney isn't. What did I tell you, I said, and yanked Annie's braid. Father made me let it go. We don't know too much about heaven, he told Annie. We can't be absolutely sure that it's there. But if it is there, said Annie in her absolutely sure voice, it's bound to have room for Barney and tuna and ice cream and cream. She finished another cookie and went back home. My father told me he had work in the yard, in the garden. I said that I would help, but only a little. I told him I didn't like it, that Barney was dead. He said, why should I like it? It's sad, he said. He told me that it might not feel so sad tomorrow. My father had a packet of little brown seeds. He took some out on his hand. The ground will give them food and a place to live, he said. And soon they'll grow a stem and some leaves and flowers. I squeezed the packet open and looked down to the bottom. I told him, I don't see leaves and I don't see flowers. Things change in the ground, said my father. In the ground, everything changes. Will Barney change too, I asked him. Oh yes, said my father. He'll change until he is part of the ground in the garden. And then I asked, will he help to make flowers and leaves? He will, said my father. He'll help grow the flowers and he'll help grow this, grow that tree and some grass. You know, he said, that's a pretty nice job for a cat. My father and I planted all of the seeds in the garden. Mother made sandwiches and we ate them under the tree. After lunch, we worked in the garden some more. At night, I still didn't want to watch any television. 
When I turned out the light, my mother sat down on my bed. She gave me a hug and I said I had something to tell her. Listen, I said, and I told the good things about Barney. Barney was brave, I said, and smart and funny and clean, also cuddly and handsome. And he only once ate a bird. It was sweet, I said, to hear him purr in my ear. And sometimes he slept on my belly and kept it warm. Those are all good things, said my mother, but I still just count nine. Yes, I said, but now I have another. Barney is in the ground and he's helping grow flowers. You know, I said, that's a pretty nice job for a cat. The end. So, as I was reading that book, um, this little boy, he learned to cope and he learned to think about some positive things that he liked about his cat, Barney, that helped him understand that, you know what, Barney's moved on to another place and he helped understand that sometimes we just need time to think about things and process things. Today, I read this book in our school's wellness center. And if you are ever sad or you're feeling lonely or you're worried about something, you're able to come in here to the wellness room and you can spend a few minutes, you can choose a tool and we have lots of tools here that you can choose and you can spend five minutes and you can play with a tool and do something to just relax and um, just take a breather for a second and then you'll feel better and you'll be ready to go to class and, and things change and you can come in here and just relax. And so I just wanted to share this book with you and let you know that everyone experiences hard days, especially a day like when you lose a loved one or a pet, an animal. And so anyways, remember that we have the wellness here, room here and it's here for you to use if you need it. Thanks and have a great week.